Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. President, uh, Mr. Sakovote, could you record the attendance of the parties and individuals to the proceeding of the further initial hearing today? Greffier, Mr. President, for today's further initial hearing, all parties to the proceeding are present. On a side note, Nuntier is present in the holding cell downstairs due to his health. And Marie Giro, the lead co-lawyer representing the civil parties, is present to replace Madame Sinofort, who resigned from her position. And there is also a new international lawyer for civil parties. These two lawyers have been recognized by the bar of Cambodia, but have not yet been recognized by the trial chamber. Thank you. President, thank you. We will now make a ruling on the presence of Nguyen Chia in the holding cells downstairs due to his health concern and with the medical report by the doctor at the ECCC who confirmed about his health issues and that he cannot sit for long in the call room and recommends that the trial chamber shall allow him to follow the proceedings from the holding cell downstairs for that reason the trial chamber allows him to do so. A warm welcome to all parties present today. Bienvenue à toutes les parties. In June 2011, the trial chamber held an initial hearing en juin 2011, to consider general preliminary matters in case 002, which concerns the accused Nguyen Chi and Kiu Samporn. The trial chamber later severed the whole of case 002 into smaller, more manageable cases. The judgment in the first case, there is case 002 01, will be delivered next Thursday, the 7th of August 2014. The purpose of today's further initial hearing is to clarify issues before the start of the case 002 02. On 4 April 2014, the trial chamber issued a new severance decision defining the scope of case 002-02, définissant ainsi l'étendue du procès 002-02. Charges related to genocide, forced marriages and rape, treatment of Buddhists, internal purges, targeting of former Khmer Republic officers, four security centers, three work sites, and one group of adjacent cooperatives will form the basis for case 002-02. The following sites and allegations will be examined. Genocide against the Cham and the Vietnamese. Genocide contre les Cham et contre les Vietnamese. Excluding crimes against humanity committed by the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia on Vietnamese territory. Forced marriages and rape nationwide. Internal purges. 
le centre de sécurité S21, Tatian Security le centre de sécurité de Krang Tatian, le centre de sécurité de Security Center, le centre de sécurité de Security Center, et le centre de sécurité de Krang Tatian, le site de Kampung Chang Airport Construction Site, le site de construction de l'aéroport de Kampung Chang, le site de travail du barrage de Trapeng Tma, la coopérative de Tramcorp, le traitement réservé aux bouddhistes of former Khmer Republic officers de Tramcock et la prise pour cible d'anciens responsables de la République Khmer pour la mise en œuvre S21 Security Center et Krang Tatian Security Center. Le centre de sécurité de et le centre de sécurité de Krang Tatian. Hier après-midi, la Chambre a reçu copies of the English and Khmer versions Court Chamber decision on the appeal against the servants decision de la Cour suprême sur l'appel contre la décision in its decision disjonction. the supreme court chamber upheld the servants decision dans sa décision and la declared de la the stay of the proceedings in relation to the charges remaining outside the scope of cases 002/01 and 002/02 pending appropriate disposal of by the trial chamber. The Supreme Court chamber indicated déclaré, that um, its decision is currently in the process of being filed à and du notified by the ECCC on 7 July 2014, the chamber issued an agenda Identifying the following items for discussion during today's hearing, that is document E311-1, item 1, the further specification of civil party preparation awards, two, item 2, the status de of preliminary objections and review of legal issues relevant to case 002-002 and item 3, the sequencing of the trial proceedings and initial review of potential witnesses, civil parties and experts. As noted in the agenda during this hearing, the Chamber will not hear oral argument in relation to any issue other than those three items just mentioned. The hearing will be conducted in public, but when any party considers that discussion of potential witnesses, civil parties or experts warrants the holding of some portion of the hearing in closed session, and oral motion may be made to the chamber. Une requête orale peut être faite à la chambre. In order not to disrupt the hearing too much, any closed session will be held at the end of the hearing. Additionally, all the individuals proposed to be heard at trial should be referred to by pseudonym. Nous demandons ce que l'on utilise les pseudonymes pour faire référence aux individus dont la comparution serait proposée. On 24 July 2014, the Chamber distributed a list containing the new pseudonyms, la that is document E305-115, document portant la cote E305. The parties are to refer to that list for the appropriate pseudonyms. The Chamber reminds the parties that under Article 7 of the practice direction on classification and management of case-related information, witnesses must be referred to by pseudonym or other appropriate means in a public hearing and filings submitted prior to the testimony of each witness. This will protect the integrity of the proceedings in subsequent phases. May I now declare the hearing open? First, the Chamber would like to proceed with the recognition of the lead co-lawyer, and the Chamber would like to invite the national lead co-lawyer, Mr. Pekong, to proceed with the request for the recognition of the new international lead co-lawyer. 
as well as any other civil party lawyer appearing for the first time before the trial chamber, pursuant to internal rule 22-2A. Mr. Peikang, you may now proceed. Mr. Peikang, you have the floor. Peikang, good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, and all parties to the proceeding, and good morning, everyone in the main courtroom. Bonjour à tous. Today we have Madame Marie Giraud and Maître Marie Giraud Mr. Ji Kiang Lu, a new civil party lawyer. Nouvel avocat des parties civiles sont avec nous. Both have not yet been recognized by the trial chamber. Ces deux avocats n'ont pas encore été reconnus par la chambre de première. Maître Giraud has been appointed by the Office of Administration as the international lead co-lawyer, replacing. Ms. Simono Ford from June 2014, and she has not yet been recognized before your court. N'a pas encore été reconnue par la chambre. Ms. Mary Giroud actually has been recognized as a civil party lawyer. But not yet as a, an international lead co-lawyer. We also have a civil party lawyer from China who has been registered with the Chinese bar and also recognized by the bar of Cambodia on the 12th of August 2013 and who took an oath before the Court of Appeal of Cambodia on the 14th of November 2013. And Mr. Ji Kiang Lu has his national counterpart, Mr. Assam Sukung. For that reason, I request your honor to recognize these two lawyers to be before your chamber. Thank you. President, thank you. Madame Mary Giroud, please stand. Madame Mary Giroud, you are now recognized by this trial chamber as international lead co-lawyer pursuant to Internal Rule 12 tier for the purpose of the trial proceedings before this chamber. And pursuant to this recognition, you enjoy the same rights and privileges as a national lawyer. Please be seated. And now, Mr. Ji Kiang Lu, please stand. Mr. Lu, you are also now recognized by this trial chamber as a civil party lawyer for the purposes of the trial proceedings before this chamber, and pursuant to this recognition, you enjoy the same rights and privileges as a national lawyer. You may be seated. We now proceed to the proceedings for this further initial hearing. Item 1, for the specification of civil party reparation awards. I now turn to the first item on the agenda, there is the further specification of civil party reparation awards. First, I note that the trial chamber is seized of the civil party's final claim for reparations in case 002-01, which will be adjudicated in the judgment in case 002-01 in the event of a conviction. Second, under internal rule 80 b 4 the chamber invites the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties to provide an initial specification of the substance of the awards they intend to seek 
within the final claim for collective and moral reparation in case 002-02 pursuant to Rule 23, Queen Quiz 3B. This initial specification shall include time frames for the request and for the action connected with the request. The civil party lead co-lawyers have 20 minutes in which to address the court. The other parties will have no more than 10 minutes each to comment on the initial specification. Allow now to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Je profite de ce premier moment de parole pour saluer tout le monde dans la salle d'audience et, et dans la salle à l'extérieur. Je vais commencer très brièvement par faire un, un, un rappel des deux thèmes que vous avez mentionnés, Monsieur le Président, à savoir le calendrier que nous proposons pour les prochaines mesures de réparation et les mesures concrètes que nous entendons mettre en œuvre pour arriver à la finalisation des projets de réparation. Cette introduction doit prendre environ 5 à 10 minutes. Et puis je laisserai ensuite mon confrère Ang Pic faire un, un résumé des projets de réparation que nous entendons développer dans le cadre de ce deuxième procès, le procès 2. À titre liminaire, il nous paraissait important de rappeler à la Chambre que nous sommes certes conscients que l'objet de cette audience initiale et d'adresser la question des projets dans le cadre de l'article de la règle 23 quinquies B, à savoir les projets avec les partenaires extérieurs, mais il nous paraissait très important de réitérer que pour les parties civiles, la force symbolique d'une décision de la Chambre contre les accusés dans le cadre de l'article 23 quinquies A reste primordiale. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle notre interprétation de l'article 23 quinquies est la suivante. Nous pensons que la Chambre a le pouvoir de condamner les accusés à supporter le coût des réparations, mais que, compte tenu de leur indigence qui a été constatée à l'occasion de la procédure, et uniquement dans cette alternative-là, la Chambre pourra reconnaître les projets que nous allons présenter comme des mesures de réparation répondant aux attentes des parties civiles. Mais c'est vraiment important pour nous de réitérer la valeur symbolique d'une condamnation contre les accusés, s'ils sont bien évidemment condamnés à l'issue du procès pénal, comme symbole des réparations. Alors sur les deux points que nous avons euh, mentionnés en, en introduction, j'irai assez rapidement, en commençant par les mesures concrètes que nous entendons mettre en œuvre pour arriver à une liste de réparations définitive. Et bien ces mesures concrètes, c'est un processus de consultation qui s'inscrit dans la continuité de la consultation que, vous, que nous avons mise en place dans le dossier de consultation avec les parties civiles avant tout, puisque ces mesures de réparation leur sont destinées et qu'au regard des règles intérieures de notre tribunal, les mesures de réparation doivent répondre à leur attente avant tout. Donc, consultation avec les parties civiles, nous avons euh, tenu la semaine dernière une première consultation avec les parties civiles qui a réuni une centaine de parties civiles représentatives de l'ensemble du dossier numéro 2-2 et nous entendons profiter des forums régionaux organisés par la section de soutien aux victimes pour continuer cette consultation avec les parties civiles et proposer à la Chambre des projets qui répondent véritablement aux attentes des parties civiles. Ce processus de consultation, il concerne aussi bien évidemment les acteurs extérieurs qui sont fondamentaux et essentiels dans la mise en œuvre des projets de réparation tels qu'ils ont été imaginés 
par le règlement intérieur. Nous avons là aussi, dès le mois de juin, commencé une consultation avec les parties prenantes, les ONG, qui ont déjà été impliqués dans le dossier de 1 et qui souhaitent continuer d'être impliqués dans le dossier de 2, d'éventuels nouveaux partenaires, et puis bien sûr, les bailleurs de fonds, euh, cheville ouvrière essentielle de la mise en œuvre de ces projets qui nécessitent un financement extérieur. Alors, ce processus de consultation, il va aboutir à la proposition de projets de réparation concrète et c'est l'objet de ma deuxième observation avant de laisser la parole à M. Anpik, eh c'est proposer à la Chambre un calendrier en tirant les leçons, bien évidemment, du cas numéro 2 Lors de ce premier dossier, tout le monde le sait, nous avons testé un mécanisme qui n'avait encore jamais été testé et nous avons eu du mal à proposer à la Chambre des projets concrets. Il nous a fallu en gros un an et demi entre l'audience initiale de juin 2011 et la première proposition de projet priorisé en décembre 2012. Un an et demi pour identifier les projets, identifier les partenaires et puis surtout, encore une fois, élément fondamental, identifier les bailleurs de fonds qui accepteraient de financer ces projets. Et bien fort de cette expérience du dossier 2.1, de, de l'identification qui a été faite des partenaires potentiels, nous proposons à la Chambre de revenir vers elle dans un délai de six mois avec une liste priorisée de projets qui comprendrait les indications suivantes, la liste et la description des projets qui feront l'objet de notre demande définitive, l'identification des partenaires qui pourraient être associés à la mise en de ces projets, le budget détaillé de ces projets et, dans la mesure du possible, l'identification de bailleurs de fonds qui pourraient financer la mise en œuvre de ces projets de réparation. Alors, ces projets de réparation, quels sont-ils Eh bien, je laisse la, la parole à mon conseil qui va vous donner une liste provisoire de projets, euh, liste de projets qui sont le fruit de nos deux premières grandes consultations avec nos parties civiles et avec nos partenaires extérieurs. Et c'est sur la base de cette liste que nous entendons travailler dans les six prochains mois pour proposer à la Chambre une liste définitive de projets. Je vous remercie. A full overview well, of the reparation awards. Big Thank you very much, Mr. President. President Le Président, you may proceed. Maître Pic, vous avez la parole. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone in and around the court. Bonjour. And I'm grateful, Your Honours, that allow me to mention the initial specifications of the reparation projects that I would include in the final submission for our civil parties. Des précisions sur les What I de will present is the result of our consultations with the civil parties as well as with our counterparts. It also a result of our uh, discussions and uh, meetings through various forums that they victims support fruit. sections and other Une relevant institutions uh, organized and we include those uh, points as well as the written request by our civil parties Nous and first of all, I'd like to present the types of projects that we actually have submitted previously in our uh, initial hearing. 
And Could in the second part of my presentation, I will mention the types of projects which are part of the same categories, that is, under the categories of the memorial, memorializations, documentations, and education. In our previous uh, projects, in the first category, that is the Dans memorial and the memorialization, we intend uh, to construct the stupa according to the religion of the civil parties. En avec, uh, and there will be also constructions uh, of uh, buildings for a group uh, discussions amongst the civil parties, youth, and the local authorities. We also have uh, a project to build the statute depicting the activities of uh, the victims or the civil parties during the Khmer Rouge regime, namely depicting the forced marriage and the living conditions uh, with the Khmerus. Another type of us uh, will be the explorations and the maintenance of the remains of the victims of the Khmerus regimes, as well as the traditional uh, ceremonies with the participation of the civil parties. In the second category, that is the rehabilitation, and as I mentioned previously, this includes the treatment or the supports by the psychologists and the consultation group between the civil parties or with the participation from the community. There is also a project for the physical health support, de in particular for those civil parties who physique. cannot afford it or who are uh, elderly. Pour les and that also includes a health center uh, construction. In addition, uh, some civil parties also wish to request a meditation center according to their religion. In the third category, there is the documentation and education. I previously mentioned the publications of the full and the summary judgment, as well as a book on the participation of the civil parties in our court proceedings, as well as a, a summary of the crime site and the charges within the scope and the inclusion of the a, a chapter on the Khmer Rouge history in the curriculum and a web page about the names of the civil parties at the a tribunal and a documentation center of the Khmer Rouge regime as well as the a mobile and fixed exhibit. Also, the uh, scholarship or the uh, training programs for the uh, civil parties' children who were the result of a forced marriage. There is also a, a, a project on the consultation and discussion about good governance and the history of the Khmer Rouge. And, Your Honours, we mention these kinds of uh, projects within this category previously, and our civil parties intend the continuation of uh, these uh, projects for the interest of all the civil parties. Besides these uh, existing uh, projects, we also have the uh, new projects which are still part of the three categories I mentioned above, but they are of uh, different types. It is different from the various uh, project types we have raised before. Concerning the memorial and memori memorialization, uh, we will have the uh, types of projects on naming the uh, bridge or road that we uh, plan to construct. 
uh, in the provinces or in the municipality. Uh, it should bear the names uh, for memorialization of people in order to uh, remind people uh, of the uh, occurrence of the um, crimes in Cambodia. And we will uh, provide the names um, for memory purpose uh, to the bridge or road. Now, for example, we say the uh, reconciliation road or bridge, and we will invite local authority and people involved in order to inaugurate uh, those bridges or roads. As for um, the rehabilitation, we uh, may provide support as well as uh, the uh, empowerment of civil parties uh, to specific uh, group, for example, those who suffered from gender violence or sexual violence, as well as um, the uh, victims uh, in the minority group. The uh, support and empowerment of the civil party is done by the establishment of the association, and we provide support as well as the rehabilitation and consultation for the civil party so that they can participate in a mainstream society. The civil parties also um, want the certification uh, or any identification for the civil parties so that we can promote uh, their, the value of their participation as well as um, uh, memory uh, for them uh, or recognition for them that they have participated in pursuit of justice before this court. And this identification uh, card can be also used uh, to receive access uh, to health services if available, and this card may be issued by the Office of Administration of the court. In order to reconcile as well as to heal the uh, mental wound of the civil parties, there have been requests by the civil parties uh, that there should be uh, the consultation or conversation between the civil parties and the uh, convicted uh, and the convict. And that should be done through the intermediary organization in order to um, provide a platform for people to um, deepen their understanding as well as to reconcile between uh, the uh, perpetrators and uh, the accused, uh, the perpetrator and the civil parties. And that will help reconciliate um, between the civil parties and also help uh, relieve uh, the tension in the civil party following the apology of the uh, perpetrators, the uh, civil parties and the victims in general will um, feel a peace and they can uh, reintegrate in the mainstream society. The last type uh, of the project uh, is the uh, documentation and education. Uh, we may publish uh, certain uh, documents or book. It can be the um, work authored by the civil party, uh, which provides uh, the brief uh, summary of the facts uh, concerning the crimes, as well as the uh, various charges brought uh, in within the scope of Case 02 slash 02, they can bring up the uh, sufferings that they have endured in life. And the accounts uh, brought up by the victims directly will assist uh, in explaining the younger generation of what really happened during the Khmer Rouge period. The publication of a summary of facts of crimes and the charges within the scope of case 02 slash 02 will help people understand what charges are subject to uh, prosecution and adjudication before this court. In this last um, category, we intend to um, produce um, disc, and we will have the digital exhibition which we provide VCD as well as 
um, the digital recording of the activities, uh, and we will display in the exhibition concerning the uh, historical uh, background of the Khmer Rouge, the process of finding justice as well as the reconciliation efforts. And this project will enable the civil parties and people involved to uh, choose the section or view the section during the exhibition that are relevant to them or and at the same time, uh, there has been requests that we produce the video recording the effort of the civil parties in pursuit of justice before the Khmer Rouge, uh, particularly flagging out the various stages uh, of civil parties' involvement, including the testimony of civil parties and the implementation of reparations by relevant uh, parties. The production of the um, digital recording um, will also help the civil parties who um, uh, who wants to uh, view that. But we understand that uh, it may be challenging for uh, the civil parties who live in the remote area who do not have the VCD player, but uh, they can be played uh, for a community uh, screening, and they can also uh, copy those digital recordings and share uh, in their community. Other uh, study projects also include in this category for instance, the oral history telling by Cambodian women. This particular uh, project will allow the uh, gathering of civil parties, particularly the uh, victims of gender violence. They can uh, talk about their suffering and youth are uh, invited uh, to listen uh, to the storytelling so that they would understand what really happened during the Khmer Rouge uh, period, particularly listening to the uh, civil parties who directly suffered uh, from the atrocity. Following which, uh, the youth would be invited to uh, share their view concerning what happened at the time. Other projects include group discussions on gender uh, in their respective community, led by the civil parties. Through this project, some volunteer civil parties will be trained on gender issues, and they will be um, organized uh, into clusters so that they can meet uh, in their community and share their experience concerning gender-based violence in the Khmer Rouge period, so that they can uh, together prevent uh, the recurrence of such atrocity. In this last category, I would also like to raise uh, some positive memory of the history. It is a project that will highlight uh, some good uh, culture of Cambodia and that will promote the affection and positive uh, culture so that they can avoid uh, atrocity. This project will be uh, produced and we will flag out only positive uh, culture of Cambodia uh, by providing uh, some artistic and musical uh, aspect, sport as well as storytelling so that the younger generation would see uh, the positive aspect uh, of it. Both existing uh, projects as well as the uh, new projects that I have just informed uh, your honors are the ones that we have consulted uh, thoroughly. And I think uh, that this uh, will be uh, subject to review pursuant to Rule 80 of the internal rules in due course. And I would also like uh, to inform uh, the chamber that there has been a request for the award of Cambodian nationality, which I have uh, uh, actually indicated it, particularly in the last uh, initial hearing uh, in 
K002. The final uh, point which I would like to inform the chamber, it is not the uh, project within the scope of the moral and collective reparation, but there has been a consistent uh, request by certain civil parties that uh, their intention uh, to request the court for the award of individual reparation and the uh, monetary reparation, and certain civil parties um, have requested uh, that the uh, financial reparation be provided so that they can uh, organize religious uh, ceremony to uh, memorize those who uh, die during the uh, period. We understand that uh, the limitation of the reparation scheme. We understand uh, the uh, collective and moral reparation limitation that uh, have been uh, provided, that have been uh, available at the court. Uh, but on, in, uh, on behalf of the civil parties, we I have the obligation to raise uh, this point uh, in for the attention of the chamber. So these are the uh, projects uh, as well as the uh, request for recognition of this project from the chamber. And I thank you, Mr. President, and your honors for your attention to our further specification. The President. Thank you, Mr. Pignon. Now the chamber give the floor uh, to the parties to the proceeding. First, I will hand over the floor to the prosecution. If you have any observation to make, you may proceed. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honors. The prosecution has no comments to make. We support the civil parties in their requests for uh, collective and moral reparations. Thank you. Next. I hand over the floor to the Je defense teams, starting from the defense team for Mr. Nguyen If you have any observation Nguyen. concerning this further specification of uh, reparation that have just been presented by the National Lead Co-Lawyer, Mr. Sonarun. Maître Sonarun. My name is uh, Sonarun. I am a national lawyer for the defense team for Nguyen Chia. We do not have any observation or respond uh, to the specification by the uh, lead call lawyer. The president, how about the defense team for Mr. Kyo Sampong? Mr. Kung Samon. Good morning, uh, Mr. President. Good morning. Your honors and good morning to everyone. First, I do not have any objection uh, to the uh, points raised by the lead co lawyers for the civil parties, but I have a small uh, observation which I would like uh, to ask for the attention of the uh, chamber uh, with regard to the request for the reparation. And and uh, in relation to the uh, possible sentencing uh, of the uh, in the future. Concerning the uh, sentencing, we understand uh, that we do not uh, sentence the uh, democratic uh, Kampuchea. Uh, we are now dealing with individual responsibility, and we support the request for the possibility of awarding a moral or mental or moral or collective a reparation, it has to be uh, in, uh, uh, reflected in conjunction with the possibility of conviction uh, of individuals uh, person charged before this court. The President. Thank you. The trial chamber will uh, deliberate on this um, request in uh, due course. La chambre se prononcera sur ces demandes à un autre moment. Suite à ces délibérations. 
Now we turn to item two. Ceci nous amène au point deux. This will be uh, item two on the status of preliminary objections and review of legal issues relevant to uh, case zero two slash zero two. Pertinent dans le cadre du dossier zero Prior to the commencement of case zero zero two, the parties filed numerous preliminary objections pursuant to internal rule 89. At the time, the chamber ruled upon the preliminary objections it considered relevant and necessary to be decided prior to the evidentiary proceedings in case 02 01. The trial chamber recently provided further information to the parties regarding the remaining preliminary objections, CE306. The trial chamber identified two remaining preliminary objections in case 02 to be addressed at this time. One, those concerning the applicability of a Cambodian statute of limitation to grave breaches of the Geneva Convention, and two, the trial chamber's jurisdiction over the crime against humanity of deportation. The trial chamber is sufficiently briefed on these objections and will issue written decision as soon as possible. La Chambre estime être suffisamment informée de ces exceptions In the trial chamber's order to file updated material in preparation for trial of 8 April 2014, document E305, the parties were ordered to provide an indication of any legal issues that they intended to raise at the hearing by 9 June 2014. Only the Q Sampon defense team availed itself of this opportunity, <coughs> document E305-11, as noted in the agenda, the trial chamber considers that, except for seeking clarification of the notion of case 002-01 serving as a general foundation for subsequent trials, all other matters raised by the Kilsen Foreign Defense Team are either addressed under other agenda items or not relevant to this further initial hearing. Uh, the chamber reminds the party the that the case 002 case file remains the same for all consecutive proceedings. And we would like to remind the parties the that they will be given uh, no more than 10 or 20 minutes to make submission on this issue and the other parties will have no more than 10 minutes each to respond. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, Mesdames et Messieurs de la Chambre. Good morning. Au nom de l'équipe de M. Kiosampan, j'interviens sur ce sujet. Et à titre liminaire, je dois indiquer que ce n'est pas simple aujourd'hui de parler pleinement de la question de clarification de la notion de fondement général, dans la mesure où, pour l'instant, nous sommes en attente de votre décision uh, prévue uh, le 7 août 2014 et que, pour le moment, je vais devoir me livrer à une sorte d'exercice um, d'équilibriste, puisque il faut que je parle uh, de ce qui peut éventuellement se passer uh, en n'ayant pas uh, en tête ni sous les yeux uh, les motifs ni le résultat de vos délibérations. Not the results of your deliberations. Pourquoi nous souhaitons 
avoir une clarification Why sur ce que vous entendez do you, do we wish to have par fondement général you clarify what you étant mean précisé que vous aviez indiqué que le cas Since le procès 02 bar 1 the case of case 002 servirait de fondement général au suivant serve as a general foundation for subsequent cases vous vous aviez également indiqué qu'il y avait un certain nombre d'éléments communs un, qui seraient qui ont été un, déjà admis dans le cadre de, du procès 02 bar 2 et la question qui se pose au niveau pratique et de comment cela va se passer euh, au niveau procédural pour les différentes parties, c'est de faire en sorte que nous n'ayons pas, dans le cadre du procès 02 bar 2, une sorte de session de rattrapage du procès numéro 1 ou sur les éléments qui pourraient apparaître communs, comme par exemple le rôle des accusés, ce que l'accusation n'aurait pas réussi à prouver dans le dossier 02 bar 1, qu'elle tente de l'introduire d'une façon détournée dans le procès 02 bar 2. Cette clarification, c'est évidemment un premier point pour être sûr que nous aurons les bases d'un procès équitable et que nous allons savoir précisément de quoi nous serons autorisés à débattre et ce qui aura été considéré comme débattu. Ainsi, nous apparaissait au moment où nous écrivions euh, nos écritures sur euh, les points de droit à discuter, qu'il s'agissait d'avoir de, des indications claires émanant de la Chambre pour le déroulement de la procédure dans 02 bar 2. Il s'agit évidemment d'une question de procès équitable, puisque, encore une fois, il ne s'agit pas qu'il y ait des sessions de rattrapage, ce que nous n'avons pas pu faire dans le procès 1, nous le faisons dans le procès numéro 2. Et je dois dire que... Euh, les éléments que nous avons eus jusqu'à présent dans les listes fournis euh, par euh, les coprocureurs et certains résumés euh, de témoins nous laissent à penser que ce n'est pas une crainte euh, qui est inutile et qui est vaine. Nous avons bien entendu lu avec attention votre décision de disjonction et euh, l'annexe à aux références suivantes, E301, bar 9, bar 1.1, dans lequel nous avons compris, et ça fait partie des éléments pour lesquels nous souhaiterions avoir une clarification, que vous indiquez par exemple pour le rôle des accusés, qu'il y aurait un examen de ce rôle, mais sous réserve, qu'il est très aux infractions sous-jacentes que vous avez déterminées comme faisant partie du champ du procès 2 bar 2. Cela étant dit, entre-temps, c'est-à-dire hier à 17h30, nous avons eu notification de la décision de la Cour suprême aux références suivantes. E301 bar 9, bar 1, bar 1, bar 3. Et cette décision, quand bien même ne nous suit pas dans notre demande et ne fait pas droit à notre appel, cette décision liste de nombreux points de droit et de nombreux points de procédure qui vont très certainement avoir une incidence importante sur le déroulement de, du procès 02 bar 2. Les choses ont donc bien évidemment évolué et j'attire notamment l'attention de la Chambre et des partis sur le paragraphe 85 de cette décision qui répond 
en partie à une des interrogations un, de l'équipe de Kyo Sampan, à savoir si nous n'attendons pas une décision définitive, c'est-à-dire une décision de la Cour suprême après le jugement que vous allez rendre le 7 août prochain, comment doivent se passer les discussions et comment vous devrez mener les débats dans le cadre du procès 02-2 sans hein, qu'il y ait violation des droits à M. Kiosampan, à un procès équitable. Au paragraphe 85 de cette décision, c'est ce que je comprends, alors je dois faire quand même un petit préalable. Hein, nous avons eu cette décision hier à 17h30, en même temps que nous avons eu hein, tout cela en anglais, hein, la requête 87.4 hein, des coprocureurs sur euh, leurs nouveaux témoins, en même temps que nous avons eu également la requête 87.4 sur les nouveaux témoins hein, des co-avocats des partis civils, tout cela en anglais. Donc je parle bien évidemment en n'ayant pas une connaissance approfondie et en ne maîtrisant pas sur le bout des doigts la décision de la Cour suprême. Je pense, pour en avoir discuté à avec mon confrère Copé, que même les gens qui euh, ont l'habitude de travailler en anglais, ce qui n'est pas mon cas euh, au quotidien, auront aussi besoin de plus de temps pour maîtriser l'ensemble euh, des éléments euh, juridiques qui ont été développés par la Cour suprême et qui ont, encore une fois, une incidence sur le procès 02 Bardot. Cela étant précisé, je reviens à cet article 85 de la décision de la Cour suprême, où je comprends de ce paragraphe qu'il est indiqué que dans la situation actuelle, s'il n'y a pas de nouveau panel pour le procès 02 bar 2, et si on n'attend pas qu'il y ait une décision définitive sur le procès 02 bar 1, la Cour suprême indique que la Chambre ne pourrait pas c'est ce que je comprends de ce paragraphe, ne pourrait pas tirer les conclusions juridiques qu'elle aurait pu faire euh, dans le procès 02-1 pour les appliquer dans le cadre du procès 02-2. Je pense que ces indications de la Cour suprême, évidemment, un, une vraie question sur la manière dont devront être menés les débats dans le cadre du, zéro, du uh, procès 02 bar 2. Il est clair aussi uh, que cela uh, va uh, devoir nous conduire à discuter de façon plus précise, puisque, encore une fois, j'ai bien conscience que le moment auquel je prends la parole aujourd'hui uh, ne me permet pas de rentrer dans le détail, puisque je n'ai pas uh, l'intégralité de votre décision. Vous avez cet avantage sur nous, uh, autre partie qui sommes présents aujourd'hui. Mais je tenais dès à présent, et puisque vous avez programmé cette audience initiale, à indiquer qu'il y aura évidemment, dans le cadre des débats sur l'organisation du procès 02 bar 2, sur les possibilités d'objections en fonction des thèmes qui seront abordés par les témoins, il y a une nécessité d'avoir noir sur blanc le détail de ce que la Chambre considérera comme devant être possiblement débattu, comme ayant ou pas été tranché, avec cette réserve qu'aujourd'hui nous avons, la décision de la Cour suprême qui limite grandement ces possibilités, et également la garantie que les témoins qui viendront déposer hein, devant euh, euh, votre chambre pour le procès 02 bar 2 ne viennent pas de façon déguisée à euh, essayer de compléter euh, une preuve que l'accusation pourra avoir jugé hein, être incomplète. Je sais bien que nous sommes euh, dans un exercice difficile et j'espère avoir été clair sur euh, les My choses que je tenais à, à mettre en avant sur les craintes que nous avions pour M. Kessampan d'un procès équitable, je pense 
que une discussion euh, plus approfondie sur cette notion de fondement général à la lumière de la décision de la Cour suprême sera nécessaire que nous ayons eu connaissance de votre jugement. Mais euh, puisque c'était euh, le point à l'ordre du jour, je tenais à marquer euh, dès à présent euh, les points qui nous semblaient euh, euh, importants et euh, critiques pour la défense de M. Kiyosampa. President, thank you. Je vous remercie, dit le Président. We would like now to give the floor to other parties. Nous laissons présent la parole aux autres parties. To respond to the submission made by Kyus on the observation à la présentation de la défense de Kyus. On the second item of the agenda and first. We would like to give the floor to the co-prosecutors. D'abord la parole au co-procureur. Le procureur général Kramhaukunyomienka ແລະគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេគេ
we haven't been able yet, uh, we haven't been uh, in a position to study uh, to the fullest extent possible uh, the decision of the Supreme Court chamber. But we do have, uh, we have seen Supreme. some very interesting uh, considerations Mais within uh, that decision. I think at this stage there is still unclarity as to how we should see, clear. how we should perceive legally uh, case 02 slash 2. I know that point you have, le uh, at one point, called it, um, the, the severance basically called a uh, management tool rather than uh, a second trial. Um, if that is true, then, for instance, um, one of the issues of today uh, seems to be, procès, I think, uh, problematic. For instance, the use of uh, pseudonyms for witnesses that we are going to discuss uh, later on today. I perfectly understand the rationale behind the use of pseudonyms when discussing witnesses. But we all know, uh, to take one example, which I think is quite unharmful, uh, we all know that um, Duik has been questioned uh, quite at length as a witness in the first trial in case uh, 2-1. And the question, the question is, question is are we now uh, forced to refer to uh, Duke as witness T to TCW 916. Now that would, uh, I think, be the case if this were to be a second trial. En effet, ce le cas. But it is not. It's uh, the nouveau continuation, procès, as I understand it, from uh, procès, ce que the first je trial. So there is already one, I think, small issue that seems procès. to contradict uh, the rationale behind the severance and the reasoning Donc, that we are in fact talking about uh, a second phase in the whole trial rather than a second trial de itself. Phase and later today when the National Co-Prosecutor will make um, its point clear on its objections to certain witnesses, le, le, are we um, le, bound le to refer to these specific witnesses uh, under their TCW number or the, their new TCW number, dans sa or are we allowed to uh, call them by uh, their names, which we have done par des pseudonymes TCW et XYZ ou utiliser so, leur nom comme nous l'avons fait de toute façon dans les écritures. C'est un petit exemple de la confusion qui pourrait arriver from the question um, whether we are dealing now with a question second trial or with a second phase, in, phase in, in, in one trial, the first process. trial in itself. Um, maybe a suggestion from our team uh, could be that we have one Notre further um, initial hearing specifically on this issue. Autre we know then, we could know then by then uh, sur cette the reasoning of your judgment on several motifs. And at that time we would also know uh, what would be, uh, who would be uh, the judges in the trial chamber. We all know that the prosecutor has said uh, this will not be the same uh, composition. So maybe um, sometime in September we could have a further initial hearing dealing specifically uh, with this issue. Because I do predict um, that the issue of general foundations could be uh, a major point of discussion and debate, legal debate. La question du fondement général fera l'objet de débats juridiques. C'est important à l'avenir. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Mr. So President. Le président. Merci. In light of the parties' submissions, the trial chamber will de deliberate further la on this issue. Étudier la question. The defense for Kyus and Porn, you may proceed. La parole est à la défense de Kyus and Porn. Excusez-moi, Monsieur le Président, simplement pour appuyer la demande, je ne sais pas si ça avait été clair, mais il est évident qu'il faudra effectivement une autre audience spécifiquement sur cette question de fondement après 
le jugement et quand tout le monde aura pu maîtriser uh, tous uh, les arguments développés par uh, uh, la décision de uh, la Chambre de la Cour suprême parce que vraiment, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup d'éléments qui vont être fondamentaux pour, uh, pour la poursuite. Et je pense qu'on n'est pas tous uh, au diapason aujourd'hui et qu'il y a vraiment beaucoup, beaucoup d'éléments uh, à voir sur ce point. C'était ce que je voulais uh, appuyer uh, du côté de uh, après ce qu'a dit mon confrère Kofi. Merci pour cette remarque. And the bench will discuss uh, this uh, matter further. The Le chamber now invites the parties to state whether at this stage they intend to seek legal recharacterization of any crimes or forms of responsibility in relation to case. 002-002. Each party has no more than 10 minutes in which to address the court. And first, the floor is given to the prosecution. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Honours, we do wish to put the, your Honours and the defence on notice that we fully anticipate, though we don't have the judgment yet, from next week, we fully anticipate that we will be appealing as a matter of law the trial chamber's decision at the start of 2-1 to follow the pre-trial chamber's previous decision, finding that joint criminal enterprise of the third category nous allons porter appel de la décision de la Chambre de première instance suivante sur la juridiction préliminaire sur l'entreprise criminelle commune. Nous pensons que c'est une question importante et la question de l'entreprise criminelle commune 3 est très importante et aura un impact sur 002-002. Nous allons donc demander if successful with the Supreme Court, si. we know your honors have already Notre ruled on it. We did not have a chance to do a, an appeal on that because it has been interlocutory. Appel, we uh, will be asking the Supreme Court to find that joint criminal enterprise of the third category was part of international criminal law in 1975, du which is the jurisprudence from other international tribunals qui est la jurisprudence that would be consistent with that. That means that crimes that may have been outside of the intent of the members of the joint criminal enterprise, not the objectives of the criminal enterprise, but were natural and foreseeable consequences and foreseen by the accused, that they could be held responsible. And we would view that, or ask the court to consider that as an alternative mode of responsibility. And to give one clear example, Rapes, and I think a very important example, on the charges of rape in the uh, case 0202, our view is that clearly is a natural and foreseeable consequence of the other parts of the criminal plan to persecute, to murder, to torture, and to force couples into marriage. So we want to put all parties on notice of our intent to appeal that and ask that during the trial that the court consider that mode of responsibility in the alternative. Excuse me, could I just make a very brief comment on the last matter? I would support the defense suggestion that we have a further initial hearing after the judgment comes out. And I also would make one brief suggestion. The, the chamber has given new pseudonyms. In some cases now, witnesses will have two different pseudonyms. And I would urge the court to consider that for those witnesses that had a pseudonym in, in the phase of the trial 0201, we maintain the same pseudonym. Otherwise, especially when we come to writing the judgment and arguments, it will be extremely confusing because each witness will then have two different pseudonyms. President, we like now to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers. Thank you, Mr. President. 
But um, once again, uh, good morning, John and Mr. President. Bonjour, At this stage, the lead co-lawyers uh, have had some discussions amongst ourselves on the legal recharacterization of crimes crimes and forms of of responsibility. We haven't yet formed a concrete uh, evidence on the, our decision and submission, in particular on the treatment Nous of the new victims, of the new people who were subject to forced uh, transfer. And at this specific, specific point in time, we do not have any specific request or a submission made before your honor. De and demande précise. we uh, urge that we shall be allowed to make further submission in the case that we find it necessary. Des thank you. Au President, thank you. Le President. Will I now to get the floor to Nunchi's defense? Mr. President, we have no comments. Le President. And kiss the party defense, oui, you may proceed. Que pas, vous avez la Merci, Monsieur le Président. Du côté Pan, de la défense de Kyo Sampan, il va de soi que ce n'est pas l'accusé de demander une quelconque requalification. Cependant, il va de soi également que si une autre requalification était envisagée, nous demanderions la possibilité, comme c'est le cas devant toutes les juridictions internationales, de pouvoir répondre spécifiquement en droit par écrit sur cette requalification et également la possibilité euh, en fonction euh, des nouveaux éléments à développer euh, d'apporter de nouvelles preuves euh, à l'appui euh, de cette nouvelle requalification. Thank you. President, thank you. Merci. And we now move to item number three, that is a sequencing of trial proceedings and initial review of potential witnesses, civil parties, and experts. Et examen initial des témoins participants. The trial chamber notes the Office of Administration's indication during the trial management meeting in December 2013 that it will fully support case 002 slash 02 in terms of the Office of Administration's indication during the trial financial and administrative assistance. More recently, the Office of Administration indicated that our relevant support services for the trial proceedings in case 002-02 may be ensured at any time. The Chamber would like to thank the Office of Administration for its efforts and availability. As a tentative indication, the trial chamber would like to explore the possibility of commencing evidentiary hearings in case 002-03 in late September or October 2014. The trial chamber now asks the parties to provide information about their availability for the commencement of evidentiary hearings in case 002-02 during the remainder of 2014 and thereafter. And the floor is now given to the prosecution. You may proceed. Madame Thierry. Le procureur. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, at your honors, Bonjour, and Monsieur good morning, Madame parties to the proceedings and Bonjour, everyone in and around the courtroom. Pursuant to the memorandum of understanding, document E311-1, paragraph 10, dated 7 of July 2014, 
du 7 juillet 2014. Memorandum demandant aux parties d'indiquer leur disponibilité pour le dossier 002 instructions so that we uh, can uh, respond about our availability to participate in this 002/02 trial indiquer notre disponibilité pour notre participation à ce procès 002/02 We are clear on the importance of this trial and the office of the co-prosecutors have been awaiting for the commencement of the evidentiary hearing in case 002-02. The office of co-prosecutors is available to Les participate in the evidentiary hearing in case 002-02 for the remainder of 2014, pour le reste de 2014 and for 2015. Et en 2015. Further, we will try our best to collaborate and to respect the other plan to put forward by the trial chamber with the expectation that the administrative hearing in this case can commence as soon as possible. Permettre à ces audiences de commencer le like plus tôt possible. Je voudrais uh, highlight on uh, one point on the uh, numbers of days of the uh, hearings in 002-02. In the case that there is an appeal, this is just a prediction. Dans That is an appeal against the judgment in 002-001. We do not have uh, any objections to the defense for the request for the reduction of the number of days during the week for the proceedings in case 002-002. The reduction of uh, the number of days per week will assist both the chamber as well as the other parties to engage in their other tasks besides the participation in the trials in this case. Such a reduction of the number of days in the proceedings in 002-002 depends upon one, the actual situation of the health of the accused de la situation de l'état de santé des accusés honors, and secondly it's the possibility of deuxième point an appeal against the detachment in 002/01 interjeté dans le cadre du dossier 002/01 et prosecutors of the view that due to the busy schedule that we each engage in, the chamber shall schedule the hearings, the evidence hearing of case 002-002, either two or three days per week, if necessary, and later on, the chamber can schedule a normal Par and regular suite, hearing days per week depending on the situation and the health issue of each accused. Toujours, bien sûr, and I'm grateful, Mr. President. Dépendant de l'état de santé des President, accusés. thank you. And we'd we like now to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties. La parole, le Président, merci. Nous laissons la parole au merci, Monsieur. Thank you, President. Nous sommes à la, à la disposition de la Chambre et nous sommes prêts à, à commencer les audiences dès le, le mois de septembre ou octobre comme euh, vous l'envisagiez et nous n'avons bien évidemment aucune objection à ce que les, les jours d'audience soient réduits euh, pendant que l'appel est en train d'être finalisé. President, Le thank you. Merci. And I'd like to give the floor now to Nunchi's defense. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Merci, the Nunchi uh, defense team is and remains available La to participate in hearings in 2014 and 2015. Um, and we strongly urge 
the trial chamber, uh, that the trial Et chamber commences, nous uh, that the trial uh, commences as soon as possible. Uh, débats, le plus tôt possible. Um, also, with regard to scheduling, uh, the chamber has previously advised in document E301-11 that our request in relation to the scheduling for case 002-02 uh, will be taken into account when the chamber comes to determine uh, that schedule. And we simply, today, bon, wish to reiterate now that our request, as outlined in document E301-7, is that hearings in case 7, 2, 2, 2 commence at 7.30 uh, a.m. every morning and run for the morning hours only. Et ne our client is best matin. able to concentrate in the morning, so we submit that this schedule will change the concentration of the client's ability to meaningfully participate uh, in Et his own trial, ce which lui de of course Mr. President is essential. President, thank you. And Madame Counsel for Kyus and Horn, do you make a statement? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ah, je pense que je ne prends personne par surprise en réitérant ce que ah, la défense de Kyusampan a toujours dit. Uh, lors des réunions précédentes et des réunions de mise en état, à savoir uh, que compte tenu de nos moyens humains meetings, uh, et compte tenu de l'importance de ce qu'est le travail d'un appel, nous ne voyons pas mener de front à la fois la rédaction d'un appel et en même temps être à l'audience et préparer l'audience. Nous demandons uh, que si le procès 002 commence, ce ne soit qu'à l'issue du dépôt des mémoires d'appel. Uh, je précise uh, d'autant que ce que nous avons uh, évoqué comme uh, difficulté à régler ce matin avant le début uh, 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 des audiences dans le procès uh, 02-2 de vont à mon sens prendre uh, uh, beaucoup d'importance et beaucoup de temps. Uh, et par ailleurs, uh, very, very je, je crois comprendre qu'il y allait y avoir And une I modification uh, de, du panel de juges et que ça aussi, uh, je pense qu'il y aura des éléments à discuter. J'entends je, je, uh, la programmation uh, septembre-octobre 2014, mais uh, en ce qui est, pour ce qui concerne l'équipe de Que uh, uh, nous estimons que ce n'est pas gérable au plan uh, du travail concernant l'appel. Nous l'avons déjà dit, nous le répétons et nous le répéterons avec d'autant plus de force que, compte tenu euh, des discussions sur euh, ce que va être euh, le procès euh, 01 comme euh, fondement général pour les autres, il est très important que nos moyens d'appel soient parfaitement développés et soient parfaitement clairs euh, avant que euh, toute euh, audience sur 02 commence. President, thank you, uh, Madam Council. The, the Chamber will take this information into consideration and will determine the date for the start of eventual hearings Et in due course. Décidera de la date du début des audiences sur le fond en temps utile. The time is appropriate for a short break. Le moment We will take a 20 minute break. Courte pause de 20 minutes. And the session will resume at 10 through 11. Some Jane Groucho.